To unpack this, I'm joined now by Peter Fabricius from the Institute for Security Studies. Peter, some have likened this two billion rand scandal in Mozambique to their very own version of state capture. I wonder if you could give us the background to this case. What is it all about? Yeah, what it's all about, uh, Sally, is that back in 2013, 2014, uh, Chang signed off on these $2 billion worth of debts, uh, loans uh, from you know, banks in Europe and Russia to, fu to finance uh, a pretty ambitious scheme to produce a whole bunch of um, tuna trawlers and military patrol uh, vessels to, to, to help the fishing uh, project by ensuring that foreign vessels didn't exploit Mozambique's waters. Well, what is alleged now that is, was that this whole thing from the start was just an elaborate scheme to, 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 to siphon off huge amounts of that, that $2 billion to various officials, the shipping company officials, banking officials, Mozambique government officials. And so both Mozambique and um, the U.S. Uh, uh, indicted Chang. Well, in fact, first the U.S. indicted Chang, and that is a rather material point in this whole case. And, and, and asked South Africa to extradite him because it said U.S. investors had been defrauded in the scheme. And only then did, the, did Mozambique ask South Africa to extradite him. So it looked from the beginning as though Mozambique was just playing catch-up and trying to avoid Chang going off to the U.S. to make embarrassing, potentially embarrassing disclosures about uh, other people and government officials possibly involved. So he's the former finance minister, but my understanding is that this, and I think it's also known as the tuna bond case, but I mean, two billion U.S. dollars to revive uh, the tuna fishing industry around Mozambique. And that mm -hmm. money, what, just disappeared, gone? Who's taken it? Yeah, that's also a good question, because there's a, there's a general impression that most of it all went into, into sort of bribing Mozambique officials. But uh, as some uh, Mozambique analysts have pointed out, the, the company, the shipping company that in fact built these, these boats, uh, Abu Dhabi and I think uh, a Lebanon-based company called Provenvest, was really in a way the major beneficiary, because uh, it's been claimed in a... In a, in a in a, an analysis done for the, um, uh, I think for the Mozambique government actually, that they were overcharged by something like 750 million, um, $717 million. Um, and oddly enough, the money was paid directly from the, the banks, the Swiss and the, the Russian banks, to the shipping company. It didn't even really go via the, the Mozambique parastatals who were supposedly borrowing it. So a lot went in fines, a lot is not accounted for. And uh, the shipping company, you know, apparently benefited to the tune of 717 million over and above normal, um, you know, uh, costs and charges and so on because of overpricing mm. the, the, the boats. So um, is it fair to liken this potentially to Mozambique's state capture in a way? I'm, I'm wondering how a finance minister is able to sign off on a $2 billion loan for the country yeah. without the sign-off from his president, surely? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, th that's the question, really. Um, you know, the president at the time was the predecessor of the current president, who was Amanda Gubuza, who's uh, yeah, generally kind of suspected of doing, you know, some pretty shady deals. Nusi then, the current president, Philippe Nusi, was the defense minister, and there's, there's a lot of uh, suspicion that he must have known about this because it had uh, defense and security implications. Um, yeah, is it state capture? That's quite a difficult one to, an analogy to draw. I mean, to me, it just looks like sort of classic corruption. You know? um, but sure, it, 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 you know, there wasn't a sort of Gupta family specifically that was was demanding seats, you know, ministries of, of, of finance and so on. But, yeah, they were obviously, as a normal bribery, they, they, was, they were bribers and bribees. You know? Sure. Is it, is it a massive victory uh, that he's going to the United States? Um, there's some concern that if he went back to Mozambique, even though there is some sort of trial underway there, uh, he very likely not have been held accountable. Do you agree with that view? Yeah, look, I mean, what's happened is that the Mozambique government has retrospectively started to, to really act against um, some of the people involved in this 
hidden debt case, as it's often been called. Uh, and, and for example, they, they, hadn't, they hadn't even prosecuted or indicted Chang until the Americans did and demanded its extradition, and suddenly, sort of post facto, they were they suddenly got active. And the, you could say the same about the other officials who've been on trial, actually, in, in Maputo quite recently, um, in, in recent months. But whether that will lead to any kind of real action, of course, is, is very unclear. And that suspicion is what motivated this, these Mozambican um, NGOs to, to, to demand that he should be extradited to the U.S. We don't know. I mean, you know, the, the, the Ministry of Justice has kind of kept its options open. It, it announced when we were asked it, are, are they going to appeal this case, that they would wait to read, study the full written judgment. Mm. I, I've been told by lawyers and all that it would be unwise for them to do that, but, but they might. Yeah, I mean, that's the interesting thing, is that our Justice Minister, Ronald Lamola, uh, initially decided uh, that uh, Manuel Chang should be extradited back to Mozambique, even though, as you point out, yeah. in fact, the initial extradition request was to the United States. Um, could the SAR relations in any way between Mozambique and South Africa, do you think there could be any diplomatic fallout? Yeah. I think that is quite a good question because, I, you know, I, I think there's probably an understanding amongst these kind of former liberation movement parties in, in government in particular that one does not, you know, drop your fellow liberation movement in, in, in the, you know, in, in a mess like this, particularly in favor of the United States, which many of these, these, these parties consider to be, you know, a kind of suspicious, suspect imperialist power. So that, 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 is a fact, that was a factor which clearly influenced Lamola's decision, I think. You know, Lamola himself was very clear. Um, uh, it was very clear that he wanted uh, Chang to be extradited to the U.S. And, and he did a sudden about turn and decided to extradite him to Mozambique at the last minute. Uh, and, and that, I would think, was because of huge pressure from within the cabinet by people arguing in favor, favor of free Lima. And you know, old, just you know, fraternal ties, etc. And so, and one of the, the the really damning pieces of evidence that in, in this case now that that emerges in court um, and was was a document written by the Department of Justice in which all of, of Lamola's advisers said he should be extradited to the U.S. In fact, Lamola agreed with that, and that was quite recent, like about a year ago. And then suddenly there was this about turn. And he never gave any convincing explanation for the about turn, which is why, one of the reasons why, the main reason probably why Judge Victor declared that his decision fell short of the threshold of rationality, because it was like, so where's your explanation? No mm. notes, no annotations on any document. It just suddenly, you know, we should do A and hear all the cases, the arguments for doing A, send them to the US and suddenly, boom, let's send them to Mozambique, you know, and no explanation. Very interesting indeed. So I think interesting. It's, yeah, we'll certainly continue to watch it. Thank you so much for explaining it so clearly. Peter Fabricius of the Institute for Security Studies commenting and explaining to us the fact that Mozambique's former finance minister, Manuel Chang, who's been imprisoned here in South Africa since 2018, is now going to the United States to stand trial on corruption charges. And uh, that's a big story that we will watch.